And everybody said, Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And the word will have its effect in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not come to the service in vain. Amen. You'll be productive. Amen. You'll be fruitful. Amen. And this work of God will prosper in our hands together in Jesus' name. Amen. Give me a good, good amen. amen. Father, we do thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for your people, for our children, for our youths, for our students, for our mothers and fathers, the elders, everybody. Lord, we're praying that today you will shower your blessings upon everyone in Jesus' name. Wake us up where we ought to be, what we ought to do, where we ought to reach. I pray, Lord, you take everyone there in Jesus' name. Our lives will not be empty. We will not live in vain. We will not labor in vain. But Lord, everything you've appointed for us to do in life will accomplish everything. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Give me a good amen before you sit down. God bless you. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, I'm reading from verses 11 and 12. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Underline that word, diligence. It says, we desire, we your fathers and the Lord, and we who are ministering to you, with the apostles he said, and we who stand ambassadors of the Lord, representing the Lord, wanting you to become everything the Lord has appointed you for you to be, spiritually, naturally, in your community, in your family, everywhere. He says, this is our desire for every one of you, that you will show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope, to the very end, that ye be not slothful, not idle, not a sluggard, that ye be not slothful, that you are not loafing around, you are getting something done, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. We're talking on diligence today. I was talking of the profit of diligence, the extraordinary profit of diligence in well spent lives. Lives that are well spent. Life that is uh, well planned. A life that is uh, well organized in every area. Diligence in life, diligence in things that matter. Diligence makes a life to be well spent. Diligence makes a life to be happy. And diligence makes a life to be profitable. A well spent life brings a happy, positive, productive, rewardable fruit. That here in life, you can see the reward on earth. And when you get to the great beyond, you can see the fruit and you can see the reward. Diligence is profitable. But on the other hand, the opposite of that is negligence. Negligence is wasteful. Negligence is unprofitable. Negligence in essential matters of life is spiritual concerns. Our salvation, our holiness, our walk with God. Our fruitfulness in the law is spiritual concerns. If we're negligent, what a terrible thing is, that is diligence or negligence in family welfare. First of all, in marriage, that we're diligent. That as a growing up, you understand you need to have a family, make up a family. You need to get married. And then you need to have the mind of God and the will of God. And you're diligent in pursuing the discovery of the will of God. And now, after you are married, the family, family welfare. There must be diligence. You cannot just run the family haphazardly without direction, without vision, 
and without a place you want the family to get to. In our profession, those who are negligent in their profession, in their business, in their education, in preparing for life, they're going to regret for the rest of their adult years. Negligence in health issues. You look at your life and instead of taking your health very seriously, you take it with a loose hand. You say, well, I can eat anything. I can sleep anytime. I can refuse to sleep. I can, you know, be exposed to whatever mosquito or insect. Really, it doesn't matter to me. I feel strong. In years to come, you regret you are not diligent in health issues, in spiritual activity. If we're negligent in spiritual activity, in our calling, in our commission, eventually you are going to have painful regrets. Painful regrets. Negligence may be caused by a lot of things. Different things. Number one, procrastination. We're always pushing it forward. Always pushing it forward. We're not having the diligence of the people we have learned about in the scriptures. Also, habitual delays. We would just make that a habit. We delay. We can do it now. There's nothing else we're doing now. We can set our priorities right, but no, we'll not. We have habitual delays that causes negligence. Sometimes it is imaginary fears. There is a lion there. Oh, there's no lion there. There's something on the street that will stop me. I'm thinking that, you know, uh, the country is so bad. The streets are so bad. The communities are so bad. Everywhere is so bad. What can I do? Those fears are homemade. And, you know, homemade materials, uh, you know, they wear quite a lot. They stay quite a lot. Homemade fears stay with you quite a lot because you manufacture that. And then you manufacture more tomorrow. You manufacture more another time. Imaginary fears. Bad association. The people that are going nowhere, you associate with them. The people that do not know where they're coming from, where they're staying and where they're going, those are your best friends. Those are your advisors. The people that have no plans, the people that have no purpose, the people that have no goal, the people that do not know why we're here on earth and what we're preparing for, those are the people you associate with. Bad association will bring negligence in your life. Wrong influence. It may be wrong influence through reading. May be wrong influence through what you see in the media. May be wrong influence through the person advising you, counseling you. That wrong influence can cause negligence in your life. And sometimes it's cheap, distracting pleasures. There are some things that look pleasurable. It's like we, we delight in them because we have some joy in them. But they're cheap. They're cheap. And they're not hard to come by. Stretch your hand like that to touch that thing. And go this way. You see that thing. Look up like that. You see that thing. It's very near. But it's cheap. It's cheap. And it makes your life cheap. And you concentrate on those things that do not matter to the detriment of the things that do do matter thoughtless carelessness just careless just carefree just not thinking about life just not thinking of who am i where am i why am i here what am i supposed to achieve thoughtless carelessness sometimes it's misplaced priorities that make us negligent we place priorities. We have one, two, three, four, five things before us. And then we pick the easiest one and the most insignificant one. And the one that doesn't add anything to our progress, anything to our lives, we misplace our priorities. Sometimes in spiritual blindness, we just can't see. We can't see the promises of God. We can't see the power of God. We can't see the reason for living. We can't see our privileges in life. And because of that, we're negligent. And as long as we're negligent, we're not going to achieve anything spiritually, anything in the family, anything in our profession, anything in any way. The earlier we wake up and become diligent, the better for us. We're going to wake up. 
You're going to be diligent. You will do something in life. You'll do something for God. You'll do something for your family. You'll do something in, in your profession. You will make a mark in the life in which you live. Because of diligence, there is extraordinary profit in diligence. And then your life will be well spent. I see a well spent life before me. I said, I see a well spent life before me. This life will amount to something in Jesus' name. You know what you're going to do? Count the cost on both sides. Sit down. Stop moving. And stop going about. Sit down today and count the cost on both sides. If I became diligent in spiritual things, if I became diligent in my family concerns, if I became diligent in my profession, if I became diligent in the things I set my hands to, count the cause, this is what will come. This is what I will achieve. This is where I will get to on the other. Count the cause, count the cause, and count it on the other side of the coin. If I remain negligent, if I do nothing, if I say nothing, if I go nowhere, if I plan nothing, if I continue day to day like a mediocre, if I just fly through the air and I do not leave any mark before me, if I just sing, if I just talk, if I just teach, if I just labor, if I just walk, if I just move around without a definite goal, count the cause on that side, the cost of diligence and the cost of negligence when you count the cost on both sides then you are going to make a wise choice somebody is wise there today and that wise choice will lead you in the right direction in Jesus name I thought there will be a good amen coming from there Second Peter chapter 1, Second Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 10. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10, it says, Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence. You see that? You see that? There's the word diligence again. Give diligence. And it says to make your calling and election sure. Your calling and your election sure. Your call to salvation. Make it sure. You're called to service. Make it sure. You're calling in your community. That you are in that community to get something done. Make it sure. You are called in that profession. The place you occupy in your community. In your house right there. Make that election and, and calling sure. And the place you are in that field of education. Make your calling sure. The place you are. In anything you are called to do. That you are here and people will know you are there. I said people will know that you are there. You'll not just be there and they say who is that? You've been there for five years. Nobody knows you. No. Turn around. They must know that God sent you there for a purpose. When Moses was sent to Egypt... Egypt knew there was a man there. And when Joshua was sent to the land of Canaan, the Canaanites knew somebody came in here. And when David came on the field, somebody there knew that somebody was there. Initially, they didn't know his name. And then Saul said, what's the name of that lad? Who is that young fellow that came in there now and did what nobody could do? They will ask about you. They will ask after you. And when there's a problem to solve, they'll be knocking at your door. Because there is diligence. That's why it says, wherefore the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Somebody there, ye shall never fall. Somebody there, ye shall never fail. Somebody there, you'll not faint in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, brethren, seeing that ye look for such things, be, tell me, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace without spot 
and blameless. It's going to take some effort. If you're going to be without spot, if you're going to be without blame, it will take some effort. Be diligent. I will be diligent. I said I will be diligent. Say it for say, let everyone hear you. Let your own conscience register it. You'll be diligent in Jesus' name. Today we're looking at the message, the extraordinary profit of diligence in a well-spent life. Three things we're going to look at. Number one, the exclusive and extensive promise to diligent seekers. The exclusive and extensive promise to diligent seekers. Number two, the extreme and excessive peril of negligent souls. The extreme and excessive peril of negligent souls. Number three, the expansive and exceptional possession of diligent saints. The expansive and exceptional possession of diligent saints. Number one, the exclusive and extensive promise to diligent seekers. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11, reading from verse 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that, tell me, diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. It's talking about people who are seeking God, number one, they know God is. Number two, they know God has promised. Number three, they know that God is impartial. Number five, they know that their lives can only become meaningful if there's a connection between them and the almighty God. They know that the, the earth will be fruitless as long as there's this connection with heaven. But the earth is going to be fruitful when there is connection between earth and heaven. And everyone that lives on the face of the earth, if he wants to be fruitful, if he wants to achieve the purpose for which he was created, and if he wants to taste of Calvary, taste of Christ, and have the benefit of salvation and reconciliation with God, there must be a connection with that God. And because of that, with that mind and that purpose, they begin to seek. They're seeking the Lord. And it says, the people that diligently seek him, they diligently seek him. And the promise to them is only to them. That's why I would say it's an exclusive promise. An exclusive promise. Look at that again. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them, only them, of them, only these people that diligently seek him. The promise to the diligent is exclusive. There's no promise to those who seek nothing, who seek nobody, who do not seek God. There is no promise to the people that seek half-heartedly. They seek occasionally. They seek seasonally. There, there is a season, they say, they're seeking the Lord. Easter time, they go to church. Christmas time, they go to church. Festival time, they go to church. And there's no promise to the people that are seeking him occasionally. There's no a promise to those who are seeking him seasonally. There's no a promise to those who are seeking half Heartedly. And there's no promise to those who are seeking many things at the same time without identifying the most important. But somebody sits up and somebody scores up and somebody makes up his mind. You know what? Connection with God is the most important thing on earth. You know what? Connection with heaven is what will register me in heaven. 
you know what? Repentance and turning away from sin and turning to the Savior is the number one thing, is the urgent thing. I ought to do believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and becoming saved. That is the thing of the hour and the decision of the moment. And he pushes every other thing aside and he says, I'm going to seek God. And he seeks God with all his heart, with all his soul. And with all his mind and anything that he needs to take away from his life so that this salvation will come, he blocks everything away and he diligently seeks the Lord. Salvation will come. Forgiveness will come. Peace of mind will come. Connection with heaven will come. His name will be entered into the book of life. But you know, it's an exclusive promise to the people that diligently seek the Lord. And the promise to the, um, to the diligent is not only exclusive, number two, it is extensive. Extensive. And you're thinking about a man, is seeking the Lord, he has salvation, he doesn't stop, he's still seeking the Lord, he has power over temptation. He has power and victory over sin. That promise to him is extensive. If he's sick, he's going to have healing. And if he's oppressed, he's going to have total deliverance. Every yoke in his life will be broken. Every yoke in your life. I said every yoke in your life. It's an extensive promise. And it's, it gives you holiness. It gives you sanctification. It gives you Holy Ghost power. In fact, it gives you all things that pertain to life and pertain to godliness. It gives you fruitfulness. Your family will be fruitful. Your wife will be fruitful. Your husband will not be impotent. And then the work of your hand in your family will progress and multiply and be fruitful in Jesus' name. In fact, this man that is diligently seeking the Lord, eventually is going to have heaven. There's a glorious destiny. But then he must be diligent in seeking the Lord. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, we're reading from verse 23. Luke chapter 13, we're looking from verse 23. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, strive, be diligent now, strive to enter in at the gate. Be serious about it. Be pungent about it. Be focused on it. And strive to enter. And endeavor to enter. Do it with all your heart. All your soul. Mean business. The greatest business of the day. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you. Will seek to enter in. And shall not be able. The promise to them is exclusive. It's just for them. It's for those who bring all their strength, all their might, all their heart, all their focus, all their concentration on seeking the Lord. Those are the people because they're diligent, the salvation of the Lord and the blessing of the Lord will come to them. The question to ask yourself is, are you diligent or negligent? Do you seek salvation this way, holiness this way? Sanctification this way, Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost baptism this way. Do you seek to succeed in whatever you're doing in your business? Do you seek that your family will be a number one family in your extended family? That is, all your uncles and all your cousins and all the others, they should have families. Do you seek that your family will be number one? And that in your profession and the things you do, any calling the Lord has given you, are you aiming for the best? Or are you just like you're negligent and you're not thinking of making a mark in every area of your life? Today is the turning point of your life. I said it's the turning point of our lives. Diligence and not negligence. We're looking at Luke chapter 15, verse 8. Luke chapter 15, verse 8. Either what man, what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek how? Tell me out loud. 
diligently till she finds it. Have you lost something? And how are you seeking that thing? Sometimes you lose the key, the key to the door of the treasure house. The key to the door of an important item in your house. And if you don't have that item, nothing works, nothing goes. But, but you've lost the key and then you're searching, you're searching. And you must seek diligently. There is key to a successful life. There's a key to a profitable life. There is a key to a life that is maximized and doing something. There's a key to a life that is happy and hopeful. Are you seeking that key? And are you seeking that key diligently? You know, sometimes, you know, our students, they go to school and they ought to understand this education is not just paper certificate. This education is not just that daddy said you must go to school. Mommy said you must go to school while spending all the money they must understand by themselves this is the key the key to a wider life and the key to a brighter life and the key to a happy life and the key to a self-sufficient life and the key to a self-reliant life and the key to an independent life and because of this key, if i don't have this key that door to a brighter bigger life will not be open and you need to seek that key diligently if you've lost anything maybe in our spiritual lives sometimes your father see the fire the zeal and the hotness of faith and the, the standing that you used to have, the courage and the boldness you used to have, it's gone. You've lost it. And how are you seeking? If you seek it half-heartedly, haphazardly, occasionally, seasonally, once in a while, you're not going to get it, but you seek diligently. And it is that seeking, diligent seeking, that will make your life beautiful. And you know, if you will do this from today, this life will climb mountains. This life will cross every sea. This life of yours, it will amount to something wonderful in Jesus' name. He said, seek diligently till she find it. You know, people, they don't so easily give up. They're seeking that thing. And they seek diligently for some minutes or some hours. If they don't find, they say, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I don't want to kill myself. Knock my head on the wall. Just because I didn't get it. No, they're not serious. Because it says, this one, she sought, she sought, she sought until she found. I'm going to find it. I said, I'm going to find it. A better life, I'm going to find that better life. A higher life, I'm going to find that higher life. A happier life, I'm going to find that happier life. A holier life, I'm going to find that holier life. A more powerful life, you're going to find it in Jesus' name. The promise is exclusive. And the promise is extensive to the people who are diligently seeking. Look at verse 9. And when she has found it, like you are going to find it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found. Rejoice with me, for I have found. Somebody there, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace that I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. There's going to be joy in heaven on your behalf. Heaven will shout for joy that such a person like that lived in that community, that such a man, such a woman like that came around us in our vicinity, our neighbors will rejoice for you. Your family will rejoice for you. And the angels of God will rejoice for you in Jesus' name. It's going to take diligence, diligence. You are diligent about what you are seeking. Isaiah chapter 55, and I'm reading from verse 2. Isaiah chapter 5, and we're reading from verse, tell me. I said, tell me the verse. Verse 2, open it now, open it. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 2. Where do you spend your money on that which is not bread? Are you not hungry for nourishment? 
Are you not hungry for satisfaction? Are you not hungry for refreshing? Are you not hungry for new energy? Are you not hungry for a burst of power? Why do you spend your energy, your money, your resources, your skill, your time, your treasures on that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hacking how? Hacking how? diligently to me. You see, there are people, they come to the service, they listen not diligently. They are not looking for that word that is for me today. That sentence that is for me today. That key that is for me today. That utterance that is for me today. That prophetic utterance that is for me today. They are not diligently listening. Listening for that thing that will open the door of my life. Hacking diligently. And then it says, and eat that which is good. And your soul, let your soul delight in fatness. A new thing is going to come in your life. A new area is going to open up in your life. You must be diligent though. We're coming to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. And that seek him with what kind of heart? I said what kind of heart? The whole heart. They're not leaving part of their minds behind. Part of their intelligence behind. Part of their hearts behind. Part of their love behind. They come to God and they come with everything they've got. Their mind. Their heart, their will, their decision, their past, their present, their future, everything they've got, they bring everything in the sight of the Lord. They say, the voice I have, I'm going to use that voice, I'm going to ask God for something, all the faith I've got. All the strength of God, I'm going to use it to seek the Lord. It tells us in verse 3, they also do no iniquity and walk in his ways. Those are diligent people. Anything that will hinder their communication, their fellowship, their relationship with the Lord, they cut aside. Look at verse 4 now. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts. Tell me the word diligently 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 he doesn't want half-hearted people the people that are sluggish and sleeping the people that are dozing while they are praying the people that are you know careless and carefree where they're in the presence of the lord it says if you seek him with all your heart if you seek him and you are diligent about it it says something good will always happen to you that's me i said that's me I said, that's me. Your life will be happier. Your life will be holy. And your life will be heavenly in Jesus' name. We're coming to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. We're looking at verse 20. My son, my daughter too, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. You'll find life. And then it goes on to say, And health to, and health to, I'm waiting for you, and health to all their flesh, from your head to your toes. From your brain to your blood, from your bones to your nerves, to your muscles, every part of you will be healthy. You yeah. see, the only thing it takes is diligence. Search that word, read that word, understand that word, take that promise for yourself. It's exclusively for you. The people that are seeking the Lord with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, you take that prophecy of the word and you say, that's me. And it says, it will be held to all their flesh. Look at verse 23 now. Keep thy heart with, 
keep, keep thine heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. That life will receive abundant, innumerable, uncountable, overflowing, surplus blessings from the Lord in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at verse 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It will begin this morning. Yeah. Addition of blessing in your life. Yeah. Addition of breakthrough in your life. Addition of satisfaction in your life. Addition, addition, addition. And then you wake up tomorrow and then uh, the addition table begins again. And then you wake up next week, it now turns from addition to multiplication. In every one of our lives, in Jesus' name. But if we're negligent, if we're negligent, we cut short our own joy our own happiness. Let's come to point number two, the extreme and excessive peril of negligent souls. The extreme and the excessive peril of negligent souls. You see, when we talk of negligence, it appears only man is negligent. Look at the trees. They're bearing fruit because God has programmed them that way. The leaves are there. The branches are there. And the fruits are there. Diligent. Look at the birds that fly in the air. Diligent. You don't find any of them negligent anytime. If they have offsprings, if they have children, if they have those little, little boys, see how they take care of them until those little ones, until they are mature and they are able to fend for themselves independently. Those birds are diligent. Look at the fish in the sea. The fish in the sea, they keep on swimming on purpose, on purpose, on purpose. They're going somewhere. They're picking up something. And then they're growing. Look at the reptiles. Look at the animals. Everything on purpose. Only man, fully man, is negligent. And if we're negligent, that's why there are a lot of needs in our lives, a lot of confusion in our lives. Everything is working well except the negligent man. In Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, we're reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed, that's diligence again, to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which had the first begun to be spoken by the Lord. And was confirmed unto them that heard him. Uh, the apostle is talking about salvation in particular. But you know, all the other things in our lives, they're also important and they're so great. And we can say, how shall we escape if we neglect so great sanctification? Think about it. How shall we escape? How shall we escape weakness, impotence, incapacity, and fruitlessness if we neglect so great power of the Holy Ghost? And we can say, how can we escape failure if we neglect so great opportunities? Opportunities around us everywhere. Opportunities around us everywhere in our profession, in our family. Opportunities as we are in connection with our friends, in contact with the people that can help us to be where we ought to be. 
How shall we escape if we neglect? And as we interact together, you and I, I can contribute to your life. You can contribute to my life. And how shall we escape? We'll escape uh, the lack of, we'll escape every the fulfillment of what God has appointed for us. If we, you know, I avoid him, he avoids me, you avoid me, I avoid you. And two are better than one. How shall we escape all that uh, failure if we neglect the people that God has brought into our lives. That's what he's telling us. A lot of things we ought to be diligent about, but we are negligent. I will not be negligent. Somebody there said, I will not be negligent. It says in chapter 4, verse 1, look at this, chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1, let us therefore fear let the promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. It says opportunities are there, privileges are there, the promises are there, and the gate of the kingdom of heaven is opened unto us. It says, but we can come short of that by negligence for in verse 2, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not be mixed or face in them that heard it. We're looking at Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, you'll not be negligent. Somebody there said you'll not be negligent. Are you there? I said, are you there? Why can't I even hear your voice? You will not be negligent in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 19. Look at this man. Luke chapter 12, verse 19. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool. That man, he had been negligent. He was overburnt on one side. He was not well cooked on the other side. On one side of business, on one side of secular, on one side of the earth, he was overdone, overcooked, overpossessing on the side of the spiritual, on the side of God, on the side of heaven. There was nothing. He didn't contribute. He didn't work for the life to come. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Man Fallen man is often negligent. The sinful man is negligent and he throws away his life by bits and pieces. He throws away a bit today, a piece tomorrow, a piece another time, and throws away vital parts of his life. He is spiritually negligent. Man, he is morally negligent. That's a fallen man. Many people, they are professionally negligent and others are thoughtlessly negligent. Think about your life. Spiritually negligent. If you had prayed about everything you have heard, you will not be like you are today. You have heard about salvation. Have you prayed about that? You have heard about holiness. Have you prayed about that? You have heard about Holy Ghost power, baptism. Have you prayed about that? You have heard about becoming effective witnesses for the Lord. Have you prayed about that? You have heard about having rewards in eternity and making use of our talent so that the Lord will say well done on the final day. Have you done that? Are you spiritually negligent? Other people are morally negligent. You see, morals do not just become automatically good. You have to work at it. 
This area of your life, it may be impatience. You walk at it. This area of your life, you may be talking, talking, talking without doing something substantial. You must walk at that. This area of your life, even your health, it might be eating junks, eating junks, eating junks every time, and there's no self control. You must walk on that. You must walk on your moral life so that you are not morally negligent. Other people are professionally negligent. They're professionally negligent. They were serious. I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for a job. Eventually, they got the job. And once they got the job, they're just there. They're just marking time. They don't use in their understanding. They're not using their wisdom. They're not using their education. They're not using everything they have learned to make a mark in that profession. And they're uh, they are professionally negligent. Other people are just thoughtlessly negligent. They just throw away their lives carelessly, thoughtlessly. They're not doing something insignificant in their families or in their personal lives. They are negligent. What's the result? Moral delinquency. When we're negligent like that, what's the result? Wasted lives. Lives are wasted. We live from day to day and there's no improvement. We live from day to day and there is no growth. We live from day to day and there's no achievement. What's the result of a moral and a professional and spiritual negligence? Affliction and suffering. Affliction and suffering. We could easily take to God and say, God, Take this one away. This is your promise. And this is what you said you will do. We don't have that confidence. We have been negligent in reading the Bible. We have been negligent in understanding the covenant the Lord made with us. In families when we are negligent, you know what follows? Family problems and eventually family separation and eventually family divorce. Can you, would you think about people? They come to church, they go out, they come, they go out, they sing, they do whatever, and then we hear about their families. And we hear that, uh, you know, so and so has packed out, is not married another person here, but they're living apart. And we're saying, What? They never miss church. What? They're always reading the Bible. What? That's brother so and so. That's sister so and so. And then we get to them, we say, What happened to you? He says, well, we just can't live together. Because every time problem, every time fighting, every time argument, they have been negligent in taking care of their families. I pray that all those things will be reversed today. Other people is bondage and oppression. Bondage and oppression. They are not diligent. They have, ne they have neglected what they ought to watch. Be very watchful. You know, somebody came to their lives. It's a little friendship. It's a little contact. And But this fellow is of, of another world. But, you know, because he doesn't use jewelry and she's covering the head and all that and walking like this and walking like that. It looks like, you know, I have a new friend now, a new friend now. This new friend, check up, pray, let the Lord tell you something. Because you see, that person comes to your life, and eventually there's bondage, there's oppression. Eventually there's perdition. And if we're not careful, backsliding can come because of that negligence. And then there can be eternal suffering, eternal punishment. And it will not happen to me, it will not happen to you in Jesus' name. You know, sinners can be negligent. How about believers? Believers are sometimes negligent. You're surprised about that. That is a believer. It's a child, a real child of God. It's a Bible believer. And yet, it's negligent. How? It's passive instead of being active. It's passive instead of being active. It's always neutral. It doesn't say no. It doesn't say yes. It doesn't say, I come. It doesn't say I leave. It's there as a bench warmer. It comes in, crawls in, and it crawls out. But it's passive. It's not active. It's standing still instead of moving forward. Stand still. That's why it's still standing. And see the salvation of the Lord. But Another instruction has come from heaven. After Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, the Lord said, why are you crying to me? Tell the people to go forward. We're going forward. 
I said we're going forward. But you know, those believers that are negligent, they're still sitting out there. And the rest of us have gone kilometers and miles ahead. But because they don't understand, they heard the first word, stand still. And now that the Almighty God has said, go forward, they say, stand still. They're negligent. Some people are talking instead of teaching. They're talking away their lives. They're talking away their opportunities. They're talking away their chances. Instead of teaching, some are idle. Instead of being industrious, idle. Instead of being industrious, some keep on pondering and pondering. Instead of praying, they're not praying. They're just pondering. They're just turning it over. That thing I heard, when are you going to take action? When are you going to pray? When are you going to act? The power of the Lord to come into your life. When are you going to tell those two bands to get over River or River Jabok and then stay there with that angel wrestling and interceding and praying? I will not let you go unless you bless me. I hear that Esau is coming. I hear that those 400 people, they're coming. I see that they are planning. They want to finish me and finish my family. I'm claiming the promise of God. But instead of interceding, you know, they're just there, they're idle. Instead of being industrious, they're just there, they're pondering. Instead of praying, others are doing nothing. Instead of doing something. They're doing nothing instead of doing something. Others are worrying instead of worshipping. They're worrying instead of worshipping. And there's passivity in their lives. There's negligence in their lives. And the Lord is saying, you're not going to get anything. You're not going to get anywhere if there is no diligence. We need to be diligent because the result of negligence is number one, weakness. You're weak as other men you're weak as people who are not deeper. You're weak as people who have not read the Bible. You're weak as somebody that doesn't have a father, doesn't have the flow of unction coming from heaven upon your life. What's the result of negligence? Ineffectiveness. Ineffectiveness is an ineffective father. It's an ineffective husband. It's an ineffective wife. It's an ineffective student. It's an ineffective leader. It's an ineffective preacher. It's an ineffective pastor. It's an ineffective worker. It's an ineffective employee. It's an ineffective employer. It's an ineffective person in every area of his life because it's negligent. Tardiness. Tardiness. You know, so slow, you cannot even see there's any progress. There's Tardiness in their lives, and there is a uh, backwardness. Backwardness, you know. Everybody, everybody is now using a new model. You see, you see the model of uh, you know two decades ago. Everybody is now at the next level. Is still at the first rung of the ladder, and is saying, "Well, I I'm coming. I'm coming." You know. I'm not as strong as you people. I'm not as energetic as you people. And I'm not as far bent as you. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm not as hot as you people. My friend, why not? We have the same Bible. My friend, why not? We have the same Christ. My friend, why not? We have the same Holy Ghost. My friend, why not? We have the same heaven we're going. My friend, why not? We have the same talents. My friend, why not? We have the same opportunity. I'm not as, I'm not as you will be. I said you will be. The only difference between you and them, between the people that are running and the people that are going back, the only difference is diligence or negligence. Diligence or negligence. And as you become diligent today, there will be spiritual progress. Because the result of negligence is lukewarmness. The result of negligence is lack of progress and eventually there's going to be eternal loss. But it will not happen to you. You know that easy life, easy life, easy life, always at ease, always at ease. You know, I, I don't like, if the, even the wind, when it blows a little bit, I watch myself and I watch my movement, I watch where I go. And if I hear there is any kind of noise on the road, you know, I shut my door, I close my windows, I turn the radio on, I'm listening to the radio to know when everything is calm before I go out. You'll never go out. In a big city, there's always noise somewhere, always 
noise somewhere. Those are the people who are getting something done and then you come out and be part of that noise. I said you come out and be part of that noise, but you also be a productive noise. People who are at ease, look at what happens to them. We're looking at Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 48 verse, tell me, verse 11. Moab has been at ease from his youth. Moab had been at ease from his youth. You know the people, they all take it easy, my friend. Take it easy, my brother. Take it easy. That's what they always say because... That's all they know. That's all they know. From their youth, they have been the silver spoon has been in their mouth. From their youth, they never allowed them to do anything. They cook for them, they sweep for them, they clean for them, they wash for them, they do everything for them. They have always been at ease. They have never sweated in their lives. They have never done anything strenuous in their lives. They have never done independent anything independently in their lives. They have never gone anywhere alone in their lives. They have never mapped out any road in their lives by being self-reliant. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Moab had been at ease from his youth. Look at the result. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Moab is destroyed. At ease, at ease, Moab is destroyed. Look at uh, verse 13. In verse 13, it says, Moab shall be ashamed. At ease all the time, Moab shall be ashamed. We're looking at verse 15. In verse 15, it says, Moab is spoiled. You know, a child always at ease, a boy always at ease. A girl, always at ease, you spoil them. A man, always at ease. An husband, always at ease. Wife, always at ease. There's no ingenuity. There's no initiative to rise up and get something done. There's no diligence. Any little problem. And then we'll use that as an excuse. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it tells us about Moab. The calamity of Moab is near to come. And his affliction his test fast because it's at ease. I want you to look at verse 20, uh, verse 20 there. In verse 20, Moab is, conf is confounded for it is broken down. Howl and cry. Tell ye, uh, tell ye eating anon that Moab is spoiled. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, the horn of Moab is cut off. And his arm is broken, says the Lord. Verse 26, the latter part of verse 26. Moab also shall wallow in his vomit, and he also shall be in derision. Verse 36, verse 36, therefore my heart shall sound for Moab, for Moab like the pipes, and my heart shall sound like pipes for the men of care. Carry carries uh, because the riches that he has gotten are perished. When looking at verse 38, it says, There shall be lamentation generally upon the house tops of Moab. Think about that just being at ease, not doing anything, not going anywhere, not thinking through, not up and doing uh, is a calamity of Moab. You will not be like that. I said you will not be like that. The Lord is calling us to diligence. He's saying uh, negligence must become something of the past in every life. Every area of your life, sit down and say this area, spiritual, I believe in there, give me a good amen. amen. Profession, I believe in there, give me a good amen. amen. This area of my education, going to school, going to college, university, I'm going to put my whole heart into this thing. I'm dealing with college education. Give me a good amen. amen. And this area of serving the Lord and working for the Lord, I'll be number one. I'm going to be diligent. I'm going to be on fire for the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are the person. Give me a good amen. amen. Your family, your family, you are going to repair this family. 
you are going to restore this family. You look at this area, that area communication, that area love, that area forgiveness, that area caring for the family, that area provision, all the areas of the family, this family is going to come from the valley and is going to get to the mountain top. And the promise God has given us, you will be head, you will not be tail. You'll be head and you'll not be tail. I hear your voice. Let me see your hand. You will, you'll be head. You'll not be tail in Jesus' name. It's going to happen. I said it's going to happen. I said it's going to happen. Those who have been at ease, at ease, at ease, you have never sweated. Sweating will start today. You have never prayed. Prayer will start today. You have never possessed. Possession will start today. Diligent. Diligent. Where is the man? Diligent. Where is the woman? Diligent. And the blessings of the diligent will follow your life in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now. Point number three now. We're looking at the expansive and exceptional possession of diligent saints. The expansive and the exceptional possession of diligent saints. Some blessings are coming upon your life. Multitudes multitudes multiply blessings coming upon your life in jesus name we're looking at proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 seest thou a man diligent in his business he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before mean men diligent man diligent woman something good is coming upon your life Chapter 27 of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 27. I'm reading from verse 23. It says, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks. Look well to thy heart. Teacher, your class, that's your flock. Principal, your school, that's your flock. And husband, your family, that's your flock. Mother, your children, that's your flock. Pastor, your members, that's your flock. Look well, diligently, diligently. He tells us here, to the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. Exodus, Exodus, the result of diligent. I'm going to be diligent. Exodus chapter 15, Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 26. Exodus Chapter 15, verse 26, and, and said, If thou wilt, tell me the word, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right, and will do that which is right, and will give ear to his commandment, and keep all my statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee. Sickness is going this morning. All those diseases will vanish away in Jesus' name. They don't belong to the diligent. They don't belong to the prayerful. They don't belong to the children of God. They will not be found in your life. It says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Thank God you are healed. I say, thank God you are healed. Deuteronomy chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Look at this again. That's the word diligence. And it says, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall not be in the city. Blessed shall not be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. And blessed shall be thy ground and the fruits of thy cattle. And then it goes on and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall be when thou comest in. Blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. 
Thou shalt come out against them one way and flee. They shall come against you one way and they shall flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command his blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all, in all, in all that thou settest thy hand unto. If you are diligent, every area of the work of your life will be blessed in Jesus' name. It shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. I see as one unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. The Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground. In the land which the Lord thy God that the Father giveth unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain to thy land in his season. And to bless, and to bless, look at it, and to bless, tell me, and to bless, and to bless all the work of my hand. It will bless all the work of your hand in Jesus' name. And thou shalt lend unto many nations and shall not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath if, if, if thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. You can see the promises God has given to the people who are diligent. And as you are diligent, this blessing will be upon your life. We're looking at Second Peter, Second Peter chapter one, Second Peter chapter one. I'm reading from verse five. Second Peter chapter one, verse five. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these six be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, I will not be blind. And cannot see afar off, I will see afar off. And he has forgotten that he was purged from his own sins. Therefore, wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Somebody there, ye shall never fall. My brother, my sister there, ye shall never fall. My son, my daughter, ye shall never fall. Second Peter chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 13. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. Are you looking for that? Wherein dwelleth righteousness. Okay, if you're looking for that, verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that she look for such things, tell me now. Tell me out loud. Say that again. Be diligent, be diligent, be diligent that she may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Diligent, we're going to be diligent. Diligent in seeking the Lord. Diligent in living for God. Diligent in serving the Lord. Diligent in obeying God. Diligent in personal and family concerns. Diligent in personal commitment to others' needs. Diligent in a profession. Diligent in keeping the covenant with God. Diligent in keeping the royal law, the golden rule. Doing unto others as you want them to do unto you. What's going to be our possession? All things. All things. All things on earth. All things in heaven. All the strength we need. All the power we need. All the ability we need. All the privileges we need. All things. Your life is going to expand. Your life is going to become extensive. 
And the Lord is going to do even the unimaginable, incredible, incredible in your life in Jesus' name. You will have favor with God. You will have favor with man. Every failure of the past will be canceled. And now with new strength and new vision, you will rise up, you get to the top of the mountain. It's time to become the head and not the tail. It's time to lead and not just to be the follow follow. It's time to succeed and it's time to cancel all the failures and all the fall because he calls us to diligent and you today, you become diligent and all negligence will be canceled out of your life. Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord it's a new life. It's a new life. It's a new life. A life of diligence. A life of diligence. A life of diligence. All the lukewarmness is gone backwardness is gone tardiness is gone slowing down all that is gone falling and rising all that is gone no achievement and no success all that is gone be diligent